It's time to scout the Senior Bowl yet again. Oregon quarterback Bo Nix is battling for that QB four or five spot with Michael Penix Jr. and Cam Ward. What can the Senior Bowl do for him? We're going to talk about this and more coming up next. You are locked on NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Locked On family? Welcome back to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast covering your favorite draft prospects. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team Every day, but you know what it is. I'm your boy Damian Parson, always on the ones and twos. You can find and follow me on X at DP underscore NFL. I'm a national scout and a senior draft analyst. And guys, thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our everydayers, man. But I got to kick this introduction over to my brother, my partner in crime, Mr. LSU himself, Keith Sanchez. You can find and follow him on X at the talent code. Can you talk to him, baby? What's up, Locked On family? This is Keith Sanchez, 2019 national champ with those LS Gringo Tigers. And the other part to this dynamic duo that we call the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, man, where we talk everything college football. We talk everything NFL football. And like we like to say over here, it all starts with the NFL Draft, man. So I want to say shout out to my everydayers. Thank you for tapping in with us each and every single day. Go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead and hit that comment, man. After this segment, after the next segment, at the end of the show, hit the comment comment button if you're not subscribed go ahead and subscribe to the show man and dp talked about it right we are talking senior bowl today we're talking about quarterback bo nix we're talking about quarterback sam hartman and we're talking about a playmaker man malachi corley out there from western kentucky that nobody's talking about that can set the senior bowl on fire right we 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 found Tank Dell last year, right, at the Senior Bowl. So we're going to have some interesting conversations about Malachi Corley also as a small school guy. But, DP, before we get that thing started, man, why don't you hit him with a title sponsor? Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50-plus infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com and use the code Locked On to get $20 off your order. That's J-A-S-E Medical. Dot com. Bo Nix, five, a, a five-year starter, uh, started his career at the University of Auburn, played three years there, transferred ahead of the 2022 season to Oregon, listed at 6'2", 217, 215 pounds, a guy that is well-experienced, I think over 42, 45 starts, numbers are out of, the, I mean, he might have broke the NCAA record for quarterback career starts or probably something like that. I, I think so i believe he broke the record. it's yep. very rare you see a guy start from like freshman year day one to his last game in college right like it's typically right. oh maybe you start halfway through the season or you get red shirted no he's been he's been playing ball from day one since he stepped on the college campus and numbers wise keith 2023 was good to to bo nicks from a number standpoint 77 percent completion over 4,400 yards passing, 51 total rushing and passing touchdowns. We've had 45 uh, on the, through the air and then six rushing. And this is a young man to me, Keith, when I look at him, good arm talent, NFL arm, uh, plus, mo plus athlete mobility, being able to improvise when he's flushed out of the pocket and make plays with his legs on third and six, third and seven. He can get you 15. He can get you 20, right? Like he's a good athlete. He's got a loose arm in terms of being able to change the arm angles and arm slots to get it around and fit the ball around uh, defenders that's kind of crowding the area, right? And I, like I said, his arm talent is NFL. He is a pro professional arm. Is he an elite? No, but he's got more than enough. I'm talking about driving the ball between the middle, between the hashes in the middle of the field. He's got tight window th throws on, on, on tape. And he even flashes some ability to layer the ball over those underneath zone defenders. So for me, Keith, when you ask what can the senior bowl do for him, is answer a couple questions. For me, the questions kind of reside in where are you from an NFL standpoint in terms of processing? When I watch the tape at Oregon, it's a lot of easy schemed up reads, mm -hmm. right? If, 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 if it's A, B, C, and D, A comes first. And A is typically open because they know how to get their guys open in space. So it's a lot of oh, man, my first guy's open, get the ball out, right? He works the quick game in terms of screens, RPOs, 
Um, and then like the isolated vertical shots, right? Do you know what I mean? Troy Franklin one on one, he knows a pre snap. I see safety. We know we got single high. I know my 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 guy is one on one. Let's go ahead and give him a shot. But it's the it's more so what happens when they take that take A away, and when and when the defenses do a good job of just showing him a different pitcher post snap than what he thought he was going to get. Right? That's when you see the drawback. And for a guy that's as experienced and played so many games, you don't think that you would have those type of questions when you watch a Bo Nix because he's played so much college football. But that's some of the questions I came away with, Keith. And his, just from a number standpoint, his A dot, average depth of target, has decreased at, like since he went to Oregon. When he was at Auburn, you know what I mean? The three years at Auburn, average depth of target was 9.4, 8.69. Since he got to Oregon, 7.4 in 2022 and 6.8 in 2023. So when people call him a check down Charlie, that's kind of what they're talking about. He's not pushing the ball downfield on the average as on, on average as you would like to see with a guy that has his arm talent. Yeah, all right. I'm I'm glad you threw in the check down Charlie part. And I, I think for us to obviously talk about him with the senior bowl, part of that that conversation has to be DP the the whole career, right? As far as what we're looking for, because let's be honest, right? Auburn was bad. Auburn Bo yeah. Hicks was bad, but also Auburn was bad, period, right? The team was bad, right? And you're talking yeah. about a quarterback trying to throw the football. I, it, It's almost this This can be a trivia question, right? This could be an athletic trivia. This could be locked on trivia, right? How many wide receivers have been drafted out of Auburn in the past five to ten years, right? That's some trivia for you, right? If you want to go into that into that bucket. And, and But that's what Bo Nix was trying to do, right? And, and you move him from there to Oregon. Obviously, better situation, right? And you talked about – the, the the offense being schemed up, players being schemed up, which is is not a knock to him. It's just Oregon's offense. So I'm right there with you with wanting to see him go through progressions, right? But I also, DP, I, I want to see – I don't even think – you watch the film, right? But Bo Nix, there's so much paint on this canvas, right? But you still don't know what the picture is. And, I, and, right. and, and that's the best way that I can explain it with Bo Nix, meaning there, there's a lot of stuff there. There's a whole lot of career. There's a lot of games started. But you, when, after you're finished, right, you still want to watch more games and continue. Because, like, I don't know what this is because when you talk about the athleticism part, checks that box, right? When you talk about the, the arm strength, DP, like, is it adequate to good? Yes, he checks that box, right? The experience playing a quarterback position, yes, checks that box, right? Leadership, checks that box, right? But – when you still watch it in the progressions part, I feel like he went from a all the way bad situation to a situation that's hard to evaluate in Oregon also, right? Like both situations are difficult to evaluate the quarterback prospect. So I want to watch Bo Nix walk in there and just be yourself, right? Now th this has nothing to do with teams and as much as you're going to be on one team, there's going to be another. No, go be Bo Nix, right? Like go be Bo Nix when, when we're watching – um you know, when they're doing routes on air, right? One-on-ones, uh, seven-on-seven seven type things. Like, just just be isolated in who you're going to be. Another thing I want to see, DP, because uh, when I watched the Oregon film, one thing I didn't see is that much with just those layer throws, right? And, and we give mm – -hmm. because I, I want to be able to – and this is why I care about it. I want to be able to properly place and say, hey, I like Bo Nix in this situation. I don't yeah. know what situation that is yet, DP. Um, but I want to see, like, because you talk about Ben Johnson, right, with Jared Goff and how you got those layer throws to where they always they always high low defenders, right? Meaning there's there's an underneath defender, there's a a, a defender. I mean, there's a there's an underneath uh, route, and then there's a, a route on top of that, right? And they high load the defenders to make them choose, and then the quarterback makes a decision based off of that. Um, I really want to see Bo Nix, DP, operate some over the field stuff. So then that way I could get more answers from him. So it, uh, to ultimately answer your question, what do you want to see? I just want to see Bo Nix. I want to see Bo Nix isolated of an Auburn Tigers helmet. I want to see Bo Nix isolated of an Oregon Ducks helmet. So that way we know the physical tools are there, but we can grade the processing, the IQ, right? The tempo, everything else mm -hmm. that takes into account to being a quarterback. Keith, one thing that you said that I absolutely loved, right? I loved all of it. But one thing you said was that there's a lot of paint on the canvas, but we still don't know the picture. That sums up Bo Nix completely because it really – there's just questions left that you're like, man, I need to see you do this in the NFL-style offense. I think a Sean McVay, I think a, um, 
a Kyle Shanahan, you know, a Kevin O'Connor, where they know how to scheme things up for their for their quarterback. I think those are the type of offenses you want to see him in. But he's just got some answers, some questions to answer down in Mobile in a couple of weeks, and I can't wait for us to get there. Yeah, I can't wait either with DP. Listen, that's one quarterback, but we still have another quarterback, right? This guy was a transfer, I believe, what, Wake Forest to Notre Dame, right? So he went to the big light. Uh, he went to the Golden Domers, man. And up and down situation right at Notre Dame. But like we say, now when you go to the senior bowl and now it's, the draft is about you, you get to go in an isolated situation. So coming up next, man, we're going to talk about yet another quarterback, man. We're going to talk about Notre Dame's quarterback, Sam Hartman, coming up next. I know we come to sports to escape from some of the crazy realities of real life, but can we just talk for a minute about preparing for real life? According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade. This is scary. I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than if my wife or my son got sick while a supply chain issue kept them from life-saving medication they needed. Thankfully, we'll be okay because of Jace Medical. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics that treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including respiratory infections, cyanitis, skin infection, among others. This can happen to any of us, guys. Visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com and use our offer code locked on to get $20 off your order. Today's episode of Locked On NFL Draft has been brought to you by Prize Picks. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. Do you want to play alongside some of Prize Picks' favorite players like rapper Meek Mill and comedian Andrew Schultz? You can now find community players under the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community each and every week. Prize Picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. For football and basketball games, if you have a player who ex exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. Guys, this Saturday on Prize Picks, I am taking uh, Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver Miko Hardman versus the Miami Dolphins for more than 10 and a half receiving yards. So go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use the code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Keith, from one experienced quarterback to another, Sam Hartman, University of uh, Notre Dame, uh, played, you know, a couple years at Wake Forest. He started the last, I believe, three seasons, you know, last two, you know, his final two years at Wake Forest and then transferring, you know, ahead of the 2023 season to Notre Dame, over 12, almost 1,300 pass attempts in those three years. So he's throwing the ball a lot. He's experienced. He's seen a lot. And, you know, listed at what? Six one two twelve, so he's probably about six foot two oh five somewhere in there. On the season, like it, it was kind of rough, right? Notre Dame dealt with some injuries at the skill position group. Their wide receivers start getting banged up. I think they dealt with some injuries from like their um their tight ends. It was just it didn't go as well as as most would hope, right? Sam Hartman's number sixty two point three percent completion, uh two thousand six hundred ninety six yards passing, and twenty seven total touchdowns. During the 2023 season, Keith, for me, I've always looked at Sam Hartman and I always said he is Will Greer 2.0. Will Greer from, you know, who played at the University of uh, uh, West Virginia, uh, you know, a year, couple years ago, was like a third round pick to the Carolina Panthers, which kind of points to their issues drafting, right? He was a third round pick and he never really panned out for them. <laughs> and for me, it was just kind of when I watch Sam Hartman, I see a guy that has adequate arm strength i mean it's mm -hmm. it's solid it's not bad it's solid right solid. he's tough though he's tough <clears throat> yeah he's got some mocks he's got grit to him he will run he's not the best athlete but he will run the ball and put his body on the line and try and get fight for first downs things like that i think he is going to be a guy that needs to work in the quick game um talking about be able to process post snap i think he's intelligent uh he, he is a quick processor for the most part you know, and, and he's shown that he can deal with different style offenses. At Wake Forest, it was that slow, deep mesh, mesh RPO yeah. that I absolutely disdain. I hate that offense with everything in me because uh, it just it, it doesn't give you a good picture 
in terms of evaluating the quarterback, right? Remember Jamie Newman that came out oh, a couple man. of years. And like, somebody, I thought he was going to go to Georgia and set the world on fire. And he went to the draft, and it was a bad decision. But, you know, yeah. it was you know, you, you it was him, and then, you know, we see it with Sam Hartman. And then he worked in the pro-style system at Notre Dame. I think what the senior bowl could do for him, Keith, is for one, is kind of allow people to gauge his arm strength in person, right? The physical tools, and not only the physical tools, the physical frame. Are you going to be – are we going to arrive at practice and then see a similar body to Jake Hayner? As last year, where you're thin, you're small, you're not a you know you're not a filled in frame, and then what happens when you know excuse me guys are tightly covered you know in, down the field in practice right? Can you get the ball into those tight windows? Can you drive it? Can you push it down the field? It's going to answer some questions on where he actually fits in the NFL offense, Keith. Yeah, but just real quick, body type. You know what I think we're going to get similar to? Kind of like a Sam Howell type situation. I think that's what his body like. And I, and I think measurably they, they probably come in really close. I think Sam is around 6'1", 215-ish, you know, somewhere around there. I, I could see that type of body type. That would be, be a good thing if he comes in sh- like built like Sam. Yeah, yeah, I, I could see it being close to that. Uh, man, just just Sam, and you talked about him as the player, right? Kind of like his his trajectory, his career, and everything. I, I view him DP when I look at Sam Hartman. I view him as a guy that you want to draft as like one of those safe backups, right? Mm-hmm. And we just had this conversation kind of off air a little bit, but can can he come in and in a situation give you? those snaps right those reserve snaps like Aiden O'Connell did right and, and listen Aiden O'Connell by no means um hung the moon or you know <laughs> set the world on fire right but you know you just come in and you play decent play decent football if I give you the playbook you'll understand the playbook and I, I trust you as my backup and let's see what the ceiling is for you as a football player right now and, and I think that's what it is because I look at Sam and just what he did last year DP he started off pretty well and that's why we just talked about it with Bo Nix, right? Watching these guys operate independent of their team, right? Because he started off good, but that was the teams they were playing, right? You're talking about Navy, Tennessee State, uh, North Carolina State, Central Michigan, right? He played, played really well uh, through that first stretch. I think he had like 12 touchdowns, no interceptions or something like that, right? But then there was the stretch of Ohio State, Duke, Louisville, USC, Pitt, Clemson, right? Where the numbers dropped. But the one thing I will give him credit for, DP, is that he finished the entire season with only eight interceptions, right? So Mm -hmm. even when things were going bad, it was a matter of him completing the football. It wasn't a matter of him turning the football over, right, and making consistent bad decisions. I think the one game where things kind of fell off the rails was the Louisville game. I believe that was a night game. I remember watching that game on TV. I think that was the one game that kind of – everything kind of fell off the rails for him. But other than that, I, I see nothing wrong, and that's a larger picture conversation, DP, that we're going to have to have about quarterbacks, right, is that steady Eddie sometimes is, is going to win you a couple games, right? Like, because we, we've seen so much bad quarterback play. Like we said, I think this year it's – was it 10 – between 10 and 15 NFL teams, the people talking about in the NFL have played like multiple games with their backup quarterback. That is insane, right? When you think about NFL and how much we still value quarterbacks, how high they overdraft quarterbacks, how much emphasis is put on quarterbacks, and the guys are still not playing well. So it's 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 definitely amazing and, and interesting in that facet. So that's why you can't really throw any quarterback away, right? And what I, I just want to see Sam Hartman DP get in there. Show me what type of leader you are. Get in there, command the huddle. Um, you know, if it's play action boots, let me see you get out, boom, hit the guy in the flats, right? Or hit hit your first read, boom. If it's uh, you know, any type of drive concept or something like that, read the defenders, deliver the football, right? I, I just want to see him hit the singles and the doubles, man. Listen, I, I'm not expecting you to go in there and hit triples and home runs. And what we've seen, the guys that hit triples and home runs, sometimes they can't hit them consistently. Right. So I just want to see you hit singles and doubles and be like, walk away. Be like, you know what? There's something about that guy that I want him on my football team. And I think that's where you want to be. If you sound another name that popped into my mind, Keith, in terms of the trajectory form, you look at Jake Browning and what he's done for the Cincinnati another Bengals. One, yep. Joe Burrow went down. Right. And, and that was the matter of sitting situation. down and learning. Right. Just sitting down and learning for some period of time and then being ready. You you need you need guys like this because at the at any moment your starter can go down and if you don't have a viable backup man you're screwed your season is screwed Jake Browning almost got the Bengals into the playoffs man like he he was helping them win games in the offense and they they battle injuries in a lot of different areas but I see a Sam Hartman and I said man you can get Jake Browning out of him maybe even a little bit higher than that you know what yeah. I mean. 
Like mm-hmm. you might get a little bit better of a, of a prospect, but I think the senior bowl again, arm talent, just seeing him like that, like I said, that leadership, that maturity from him, right? Yeah. Don't come out here and be like, what was it? Carson Strong was like, everybody was talking about his knee. People said he was a statue. He was out there senior bowl practice in 2022 trying to run the ball. He was out there trying to, he was, there was talks about him freelancing and different things like that. It's like, don't come out here and do that. Just come out here and yeah, be, be don't try to prove nobody wrong, man. Be, be self-aware, man, and, and just get the job done. But I would say this, DP, if, if, and I don't know if you got that feeling from watching the film, I do expect him to be composed, right? Because I, I, yeah. that, that's why I talked mm-hmm. about the interception stuff. I, I didn't see a player that was just wild and out of control and just doing whatever he wants, right? I, I expect yeah. him to show up. I expect him to be a mature leader off the field, but also I expect his play to be somewhat mature also. Like, I, I think he is self-aware of who he is. And it's like, you know what? I'm just about to go in there and ball out. I don't think he's trying to come in there and, and try to be QB1 walking out of there, right? Trying to launch 80 or bombs. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, just trying to do all type of crazy stuff. Real I just quick, think he's you, trying to you, go in there We talked earlier this week about ceilings and floors. Sam Hartman is a good floor type of prospect. And a yeah. guy that I, w- I wouldn't mind drafting late day three or day three period because I know what I'm getting from him. Yep, no, I agree 100% with DP. Let's keep this thing going. Let's keep it flowing, man. We are on to Western Kentucky's, man, Malachi Corley. Who is Malachi Corley? We're about to tell you all about him. Last year, doing a podcast, we could have told you about Tank Dell, man, and how he could enter the NFL and be that explosive playmaker. I think Malachi Corley potentially could be on that type of path. So stay tuned, man, as we scout and talk about Malachi Corley. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Guys, instead of saying new year, new me, new year, new you, say new year and a better me because let's focus on what we did well in 2023, not what we struggled with. Leave the struggles in the past and focus on the good. That's a that's a New Year's resolution that we need. And having someone that will sit with us, whether in person, but especially online and convenient, like with BetterHelp, having a therapist that will talk to us, that will be objective, right? That will be non-biased is great. I know for me personally, therapy counseling was so big to help me deal with some of the issues I had in the past, whether it was my my anger, uh, depression, whatever it was, I was able to get better because of therapist, counselor, so forth and so on, guys. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Celebrate the six, the progress and success you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. Western Kentucky wide receiver Malachi Corley, Keith, a guy that I think he's listed at what, like 5'11", 215, yep. uh, maybe almost 220. And, DP, you yeah. said something, and I don't even mean to cut you off, and I know it's a no. process, right, to talking about these players, but you said you have some comps. For Malachi Corley, mm-hmm. I kind of want to reverse do this rollout, right? I, I'm, I'm, I want to hear the comps. I want to hear who are the two comps that you have for Malachi Corley. I want to work backwards with this conversation. Listen, 5'11", 210. I want to make sure I got that right. 210. And he, the way his game, it, it reminds me of two different players. One is Debo Samuel. Like We, we hear that, that yeah. comp throw out all the time, yep. but this is one of the guys that actually kind of fits that. Where, you know, when you look at Debo's game, he's not a pure wide receiver that you're going to say isolate one-on-one run the crisp routes separate can like die, like play at the play down at the down right he's more of a get the ball to me and let me be a beast right mm-hmm. that's how he plays yards after contact run after the catch that's where he's special crossers in breakers stuff like screens running the football out of the backfield all those type of things Corley does very similar to that but where I think the senior bowl can help him I see some little flashes of shades of Dontavion Wicks in his game as well in terms of that was a guy. We, you talk about Tank Dell, who we saw at the at the Senior Bowl of 2023. We also saw Jaden Reed. We saw Dontavion Wicks. We saw those guys go out there and have days, Keith, stack day after day in practice. You know, Tank Dell only practiced two days. He got on the, on the, on the plane and he went home. His agent <laughs> said, we're done, right? Well, we saw Jaden Reed. We saw – Puka Nakua, we saw these other guys, you know, Puka ended up getting hurt, you know, but when he was, before he got hurt, he was dominating. He was playing, putting up, putting in work. And for me, when I look at just Malachi Corley, 79 receptions, uh, 985 yards receiving, 11 receiving touchdowns. Again, he has a dense frame, uh, you know, a guy that is really good. And 
I think similar to Debo, the vertical speed in terms of running takeoffs, running go routes may not wow you, but it's more so the burst and acceleration front that to transition from receiver to runner, where that's when you see, I can't remember what game it was this year, uh, this past, this past college football season, he catches like a, a, a flat route. He like breaks two or three tackles and then takes off and scores like a 40, 50 yard touchdown. Right. And, and I think in that same game, if they hit him on the crosser on a shallow cross, breaks a tackle, stiff arms a guy, and he takes it to the house. He fights through one or two more tackles right before he crosses the 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 the, uh, the pylon, right before he crosses the goal line. This is just a guy that I think there's so much room for him to grow and climb in this wide receiver class with a dominant performance down in Mobile, Keith. Yeah, I, so the I'm gonna start where you started, where I wanted to start, right? With the comparisons, um, the 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 Debo Samuel comparison, I thought was very interesting. I think we see him the same, right? Like a get the ball in his hands, um, and he he's physical, run after the catch guy. He operates like you talked about these 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 segments of bursts and explosiveness, right? Like, and and then he's gonna run through arm tackles. He he has that wild kind of like he's a wild runner in the sense of the fact of you know the the it, the mentality right like he's gonna run through you and, and i love that and i kept thinking about you know because i i wasn't even thinking about comps i was thinking of team fits right and just you know potentially we always talk about the eagles needing the number three wide receiver um mm -hmm. uh, you know just some of these other teams just getting the ball in their hands getting the ball in the player hands and letting them do different things with them. You know, if they do the jet motion or you talked about the Baltimore Ravens, right. Potentially needing another wide receiver would be a, another good chess piece out there. I, I, I when I watched Malachi call the DP, I liked them and I liked them enough to say something like, you know, this skill set may be back into the second round ish type, right? I, I just want to see his ability to run routes right run, run clean crisp route sink his hips um how much can he separate at the top of the route right and, and obviously we're not talking about elite separation and things like that i just want to see if you can separate if you can run a, a quick you know 10 yard 15 yard dig get some separation at the top of the route catch the football right so one-on-ones honestly for me dp is going to be huge for him because i think i i profiled who the athlete is i think i profiled what part of his uses is right now how does he move up that draft ball for me is being able to do multiple things and i know i could put the football in his hands and he could be run after catch guy now is can you run those routes because i'm i'm really in between dp would he be a good number two wide receiver right like is, is this uh, my number one or my number two i mean i'm a number two or my number three i'm sorry and i i want to lean at, from everything i see from the competitive nature it makes me want to lean to this guy can be a number two wide receiver for you i i think this um watching who who is our guy and I'm, I'm blanking on his name and i know exactly who i'm talking about um mingo jonathan mingo right oh yeah yeah and Jonathan Mingo went in the second round. I believe right now, and, and we'll have practice recaps, and I have to check myself, or y'all can check me, right? <laughs> I like what he offers more than what Jonathan Mingo offered at this very mm -hmm. moment. So um, that that's kind of if that kind of puts you a place as a ballpark, right? Of my feelings that I had toward a player, right? And when I watched Jonathan Mingo initially, I didn't have the same feeling. But with with Malachi Corley, I feel good about him as a football player i think it was exciting and you're talking about that was just one year of production right 80 catches almost a thousand yards 12 touchdowns right in his western kentucky offense so i like malachi corley also and i'm, I'm gonna kind of keep digging dp i really want to because the thing is with debo samuel as the comp i agree with you the only issue is is that there's only one debo one samuel team. right up and and not just the player right but even the usage part of it like even mm -hmm. um how do you put this? Like even teams that come from or head coaches that have came, come from the Kyle Shanahan tree, there hasn't been a lot of usage. Like they haven't found other guys similar to Debo Samuel to fill Debo Samuel-esque type roles, right? So it'll be really interesting. Or, or maybe DP, he can play in Miami, right, with, with, with Mike McDaniel. And Mike McDaniel can find some fun things to do with him and getting the ball in his hands and letting him run the rock. But I'm right there, which I, I enjoy watching Malachi. Yeah, D Debo's, you know, as we know, he's a unique case because he'll line up and take toss sweeps and stretch runs. And yeah, we're not exposing all receivers to that crap. Like, we don't want to do, we don't want to, I'm telling you now, for someone who played that position growing up, 
it's one of the most violent positions in football. And I don't want to expose no risk. I don't even want Debo doing it for his long-term health because the, the, the wear and tear is real. No matter how, if you only do it 25 times or you do it 125 times a year, it still wears you down. But Malachi, man, I, I'm with you, Keith. I want to see him just kind of see them routes against tight man-to-man coverage. Can you separate just enough? Can I say you're adequate to solid, right? I don't want to say you're below average. And that's that because if that's the case, we're going to have, have some questions, right? But I listen, when you look at his numbers as well, Keith, over the last three years, Keith, legitimately 355 targets since 2021. He's a high-volume guy in terms of Western Kentucky. Now you can say, well, they didn't have a lot of options. They had some solid, some decent options, but he was clearly the best option. And I like when you brought up Mingo. I was, as you were talking, I was thinking the Carolina Panthers, right? I was thinking Panthers, you can put him, you got Amir Smith-Marset, who does a lot, who you started to use this year. He can kind of fill that kind of wide receiver two role if you can go and get a true wide receiver one through free agency to give Bryce a high volume movement Z that can play in the slot, that can pre-snap motion and just get the ball out of his hands, right? Instead of him sitting back and waiting for, for the rush, he can get the ball out and be, uh, you know, kind of, precautionary get the ball out uh read the coverage get it to, to to corley and the hopefully the better weapons that he'll have in 2024 but i think corley will be a nice fit and and the senior bowl is really going to dictate how high he goes and, and which team falls in love with him down in mobile yep i agree 100 with dp that wraps up another episode man of the locked on nfl draft podcast man your dynamic duo where we talk everything college football nfl football we talk everything in between man because we believe that it all starts with the nfl draft i want to say shout out to our everyday is thank you for tapping in with us each and every single day man i told you at the beginning of the show now it's time to remind you at the end of the show go ahead and hit that like button if you haven't commented go ahead and hit a comment if you haven't subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe button to keep hearing this content man like we say man we want to say thank you this youtube channel has been growing exponentially just over the past month and we we are heading into draft season. We believe we already started draft season, but there's still playoffs to be talked about, man. And tell a friend to tell a friend about this podcast. I want to say shout out to everybody. It's thank you for tapping in with us, man. I am Keith Sanchez. You can find me on X at the D Talent Code. That is my co-host, man, Damian Parson. You can find him on X at DP underscore NFL. And like we always like to say, y'all talk to us because we like to talk back. Go subscribe and follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts to get the latest episode as soon as it is available. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, guys, go down, go there, hit automatic download so you get updated every time a new episode drops. But also leave a five-star review, man. Talk to us and leave a five-star commented review so we can hear your thoughts. Tell us, you know, what you think. And we're constantly looking to improve. So talk to your boys. We always love to talk back. But guys, listen. We have NFL draft scenarios coming up tomorrow. Tennessee Titans, you know, fired their head coach. They got a young quarterback that they believe in. What do they need to do through the uh, 2024 NFL draft? We're going to kick the show off with that stock up, stock down, where we've been scouting heavy. We got some guys whose stocks are going up, some guys whose stocks may have tipped off and, and decreased just a little bit. And, of course, we got coach them up tomorrow as well. So come and join the conversation again tomorrow on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.